Alex Lyson from Rush, and here I am in Fort Lauderdale. We're playing our first gig on the second half of the Time Machine Tour, which we started last year. Uh, we're playing here tomorrow night, and this is our rehearsal night, the one rehearsal that we have before we get back into things. Um, I guess after 40 years or so, we, we sort of have it down, and I like to think we don't have to rehearse so much anymore, but I guess we'll find out about that tomorrow. So this is my stage right area. This is my side of uh, the world. Uh, my pedal board is here. All my switching is here. Um, volume pedal, uh, a, a wah pedal, switching for the piezo, which comes out of this jack here, built into the guitar. Uh, that gives me an acoustic kind of sounding uh, tone on, on an electric guitar, which I blend in for, all, for obviously acoustic parts as well as any kind of clear uh, articulation that I want to have with any kind of the, of the dirty sounds. And my switching is, um, it's an uh, access uh, unit built in Toronto. The amp switching is here. There are six channels altogether. I use three basically, clean, a dirty, and then sort of a very super saturated uh, tone for some lead stuff as well as any kind of uh, you know, heavier accented things. And my bass pedals here, Taurus pedals, Actually, they're cord pedals, but they're set up as as Taurus pedals were with those Taurus pedal sounds and samples. My switching is pretty straightforward. I've got um, three G-Force units. Um, one that I use for a pretty basic delay, another for longer delays, and then the third one, I'll have a number of different things from pitch shifting to phasing to more delay. To reverb. I have a, th a fourth G-Force that I use strictly for a big sweep flange. I have um, a 1210 for my chorus. I've had these G-Forces for years now and I don't see the point in, in changing them. They work great. I'm really happy with them. They're, they're great quiet units. The effects are great so I'm sticking with that. The 1210, boy I've had that for almost 20 years I think. You know 18 years, something like that. So it's, it's held up really, really well. I have a switch here for my third amp, which is a Hughes and Kettner core blade. And that one I use in and out for certain songs, again, where I want to have a clean line underneath the heavier stuff I'm playing, or some phasing, or you know, just really a different sound to augment my regular sound. And typically my regular sound consists of two Hughes and Kettner triamps, uh, the Alex Lifeson model. One has all my effects that run through it, which I switch here in and out. The second amp is just a straight feed, so it switches channels from clean to dirty to this saturated channel, but it doesn't have any effects on it. So Brad out in the house does a blend of those two depending on what he needs to do. Again, and I have switching for my amps to be able to switch them off at this point for you know tuning or if I want to check something else out and, and I don't want my amps uh, necessarily on. I see that I have a few open spaces here for switching, so I'm gonna have to do something about that on the next tour. Then I have this keyboard here, and you know me how much I love keyboards, which I play, I actually play for one song, uh, for Time Stand Still. And then it gets taken away and hidden, so I don't have to look at it again. And then of course there are my amps. So th with this tour, we really wanted to do the steampunk sort of theme. And, and this is really the first time that we've had uh, this kind of unified theme on stage where it all ties in together. Typically I've had the stacks of, of amps behind me for that real big macho guitar thing. Uh, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty great standing in front of stacks of amps. It is an exciting thing. We had these built for us. Pretty much all the stuff was built by the same company in uh, Toronto and they came up with this design with all the piping and I got a twin 12 cabinet in each one of these. And then all of this stuff down here of course looks awesome and I wish it actually did something but it's really cosmetic. But it looks really cool I think. And Hughes and Kettner were very excited about actually doing a production line and they've had requests for this. Of course they weigh about 14,000 pounds. It's obviously got a screen in it, so we run all sorts of video that we did, especially for the tour. Uh, again, it's goofy, funny stuff, which, which I kind of tend to, to enjoy more than the serious stuff. 
and then there's my beautiful guitar. This is uh, one of the new um, access models from Gibson that's named after little old me. We spent a couple of years developing this guitar. I went through quite a few different bodies uh, before we found the right balance between weight and, and thickness. Um, it's a little thinner than what a regular Les Paul or traditional Les Paul would be. But unlike the other Axis models, this one is not chambered like the others are. The others tend to be a lot lighter. This still has some weight to it. It has this beautiful sculpting here in the neck, so it's quite easy to get up, up high on the guitar. Feels great. The weight, the balance, everything is great on it. Uh, as I said, there's a piezo that's just built into the bridge. So the magnetic pickups, these two humbuckers, are controlled as they normally would be on, on any guitar. It's got a pull-push system, so you could put the pickups in series or parallel so you can get a cleaner kind of wiry sound or the or the more traditional thick uh, humbucker sound. The volume as I said is on this tone pot which is typically the tone pot for the piezo. Uh, there are two jacks. You can run a blend of both the magnetic and piezo from this main jack and then we have what we call the uh, LIFO sound which was Gibson's uh, very humorous take on, on, uh, on this second jack. And that's just strictly for the piezo. And in our application, I run a radio pack straight out to the house from that jack. So I don't do any blending there. Everything's done in the house. And I switch it on and off at my pedal board. It's got a Floyd Rose uh, vibrato system. So it's all locked in. It stays in tune really, really well. And I can't tell you how great this guitar feels. It was worth spending the time on it. We went through a, you know, a few sets of, of pickups until we found the right kind of wiring and tonality that we really wanted to get from, from this guitar. And uh, it, was, you know, it was a balancing act until we got the weight, the pickups, we got all those things right. And we're thrilled about it. This particular model is the, is the Royal Crimson. And then there's also a Viceroy Brown, which is a, sort of a typical sunburst, but it goes out to a darker, fringe color than, than what, what Gibson's been doing lately. But like I said, I, I'm just loving these guitars. I'm going to be using them on this tour, as well as some of my other ones. But this one's going to become the primary, and, and the other one, the Viceroy Brown, is, is the secondary. Uh, so looking forward to putting them through their paces on this tour. I hope I've been uh, uh, informative in what I do up here and, and my stuff. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Take care.